MassTutor.biz and MassDVDs.co.uk Higher Mathematics Lesson 2, Part 4 Next in Algebra we're going to be looking at sequences with numbers the term to term rule and the position to term rule So first, what is a sequence? Well, a sequence is a pattern of numbers or shapes that follow a given rule. Each number in the sequence is called a term. So that's the first term, the second term, the third term. So here we say, write down the next two terms and the eighth term and the term to term rule for this sequence. So looking at it, we can in fact see that six is being added on each time to get the next number. So if I add 6 onto that I'll get 29. Add 6 onto that I'll get 35. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Add 6 onto that and add 6 onto that. So there's my eighth term that I'm asked to find and my next two terms. Now the term to term rule I add on 6 because that tells us how to work out the next term each term the next term each time so that's called the term to term rule I suppose I could make that a bit better to find the next term I add 6 to the previous term that would sound better wouldn't it to find the next term I add 6 to the previous term there you go write down the next two terms and the eighth term and the term to term rule so this is subtract three subtract three subtract three so if I subtract three again I'll get that subtract three I'll again I'll get that subtract three again I'll get that subtract three again I'll get that one two three four five six seven eight so there's my eighth term there's my next two terms and the term to term rule was I took off 3 but I suppose it would be better to say to find the next term I subtract 3 from the previous term to find the next term I subtract 3 from the previous term that's better add 4 add 12 that's not much good is it? I want to be the same times by 3 or let's say it properly multiply by 3 multiply by 3 I think I'm going to get the calculator in case I make some silly mistakes here so let's do that cancel 54 multiplied by 3 I can't even press the buttons now 54 multiplied by 3 multiplied by 3 multiply by 3 and multiply by 3 so there we have the next two terms and the eighth term I times did times did by 3 or I think it would be slightly better if I said to find the next term I multiply the previous term by 3 Boom. Who are R for that 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 and R for that Ooh, I could have said shared it did by 2 so the term to term or oh, there's the next two terms and there's the eighth term I shared did dead by two or or I halved halved that's right halved it I think much better to find the next term I divide the previous term by two and the last one well that's add on three add on five add on seven that's times by four, that's times by two and a quarter, that's times by goodness knows. That's not very good, is it? 
However, I can spot them. They are the square numbers. First square number, second square number, third square number, fourth square number, five fives, six sixes, seven sevens, eight eighths. So there's my next two terms and my eighth term. So the term to term rule, there isn't one with respect. You've got to have the same thing happening each time. But there's still a pattern. Remember what a sequence is. A sequence is a pattern of numbers or shapes that follow a given rule. So this is where we go to the position to term rule. Rather than the term to term. So this is the first position, the second position, the third position, the fourth position, the fifth position. I can think of the nth position or any position you like is the position squared, the position number squared. And there are other ways I could write it as well, but for this particular case that's absolutely fine. So the position to term rule is I square the position number to get the term. And that's the end of lesson two, part four.